715, we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, this is a meeting of the Hadley Zoning Board of Appeals. Request um, by Attorney Tanner on behalf of Mr. Ciccarelli to appeal the issuance of a building permit uh, number 9110 for 373 River Drive. <coughs> so uh, let's start with Attorney Tanner. Sure. So my name is Mark Tanner. I'm here on behalf of, uh, as you said, Mr. Chickwell and his wife Kate, who are um, the abutters who live directly across from the automobile dealership. Um, I don't know whether you're familiar with it, but the planning board previously issued a uh, special permit site plan or site plan approval, which allowed um, the automobile automobile dealership to exist. If you look at um, your zoning bylaws, and I gave you a pretty short memorandum the last time I was here, um, the use of an automobile dealership or automobile sales or things of that nature is not allowed in the zoning district. And so the only way that it could exist it would be one of two ways. It would have to have a variance or it would have to be a pre-existing non-conforming use. So if it was a pre-existing non-conforming use, which is what the planning board treated it as, in order to make any change or alteration of either the structure, because the structure itself is non-conforming due to setbacks and yard issues, or of the use, the uh, Hadley Zoning Bylaw very clearly requires that this board, the ZBA, uh, make a finding that the change in use or the change in the structure is not substantially more detrimental than the existing use. Um, so it's our position that the permit that was issued by the planning board is, a, is an absolutely meaningless permit because you can't have an automobile dealership in that zoning district with a site plan approval or with a special permit. It's a non, absolutely not allowed use, but for a variance or its pre-existence. So the only way that they could do what they did is to come to this board uh, for a finding that it's not substantially more detrimental. The zoning bylaw is absolutely clear on that issue. The case law is absolutely clear on that issue. So what we're asking you to do is order the building inspector to revoke the building permit, direct the applicants to come to this board for a finding uh, as to whether or not their current use or the change in use from what it was before is substantially more detrimental um, than the non-conforming use that was there before. And you would have the right to do the same thing the planning board did is, and that's either to allow or deny that, and if you allow it to uh, condition it. But it's our position that they just plain and simple don't have the right permit. There's really no um, argument or dispute that the use was expanded. Uh, all you have to do is drive by to see that. Um, the building was in fact clearly expanded. They raised the roof, put a lift in the garage. Um, and so there was a change, alteration, or extension of the pre-existing non-conforming use. So we're not asking you to shut them down. We're not asking you to take that kind of action. What we're asking you to do is direct them to come to this board to get the, the appropriate permit. And I, I think it's perfectly clear under your zoning bylaw that that's required. I'm happy to answer your questions. If you have questions. Um, do you guys want to ask questions now, or do you want to have um, Attorney Bill <coughs> present, and then we can ask questions to both attorneys? I think we'll let the other attorney present, and then we can. Basically, if the building commissioner is willing to defer because my understanding is he's basically dealt with this issue and made a decision and if he's willing to go through you know his reasoning I, I think that's probably what we would rely on okay. Okay. a little bit of history uh, yes Paul Naris came to me discussed what he wanted to do with the building and uh, I said that there was two issues that needed to be addressed. One was the, non uh, the business itself because it's, a, it's not conforming to the district. Uh, so as the attorney stated, that's one way of getting it, or being grandfathered. So there was several discussions relative in the town uh, government if that was a non uh, a grandfather continuous business the determination was yes it was and the reason <coughs> is is because the gentleman that purchased it from Lesko who was the previous owner 
had purchased it for his own personal use to do minor repair and uh, to sell his cars. There was a license and it, it was continuous from when he got permission from the planning board to, to start his business till the day he passed away. And that's when it was then still kept on going by his wife. Got the li they had the license to have a class two license, which is this, to repair and sell um, used cars. It was then sold to Mr. Naris, who's we're dealing with right now. With regard to the building, so I, I should back up. So that went in front of the planning board because I said, let's get the planning board involved and figure out if that was non-conforming. I mean, grandfather for non-conforming, and that happened. And they, they agreed with that is there, statement that was grandfather. Is there a difference between, I'm assuming there's, so when you say that it's a non-conforming or grandfather, what, what's, the, what's the distinction between those two different things? So what, what transpired up along uh, Route 47, at some point in time, the town changed the bylaw from a business to a limited business. And the limited business was more to restrict the, the type of businesses that were going to go up and down uh, Route 47. And certainly there was, the reason behind it was because of what was happening on Route 9. They, since it was the same district at the time, there was concern that the same thing could go up and down Route 47. Grandfathering is, the, the statement is, if a business continues the same use, it's grandfathered. It, you can't just put a business out, out of business if, if you change the bylaw. So it's continuous. So is there any difference though between uh, pre-existing non-conforming use and grandfathering or are we using those interchangeably? It's interchangeable. Okay. Okay. So that was determined by the planning board with their first hearing. Paul Neris came in the, and uh, talked to me about the building. He, he had several things that he wanted to do with the building. Uh, he wanted to add on to the structure, he wanted to change, uh, uh, put in larger windows, he wanted to put this, what they called the tower on it. During the planning board hearing, Mr. Neris removed all those things. So what was left when Mr. Neris came back to me requesting alter, uh, changes to the building? It was to raise the, the existing walls to accommodate lifts within the building. Now, since the business was permitted by planning, the lifts are part of the use of the business. In order to be safe and meet OSHA standards, the ceiling or the roof had to go up. So what has happened? Sorry. I, as a zoning enforcement officer, have to make a determination if something is non-conforming or not. So what was left with what Mr. Naros wanted to do? He wanted to add four feet on the top of the existing walls to raise the roof so the ceiling was higher enough to put these, use the lift safely. So the, the What's non-conforming about the, the building? It's not the walls. It had to be, the, it was the setbacks. The walls are there. The walls are still meet our bylaw with regard to height, with the roof on. It still meets all the requirements. So we, I have to look at this part of the bylaw. In my opinion, is it well written? No. It, because it says things like changed, altered, extended the use of the building. So we get into, there, there's got to be a cutoff on what people can and cannot do to a building. So can we say that somebody changing doors and windows, that's an alteration. 
is that means that they have to go in front of the board, your board, to get a finding? In my opinion, absolutely no. If that was the case, you will be a full-time board because well over 85% of all our properties and everything are, are non-conforming. So that is my determination that what was going to be done to that building was an allowed change to make one a building safer for its use and it was not anything that jeopardized what the bylaws stated. <coughs> I did ask town council <coughs> if I could give the building permit out and they said that I could and I did. <coughs> Based on that determination. So could I just rebut the building inspector? Sure. So I, I, I have a tremendous amount of respect <coughs> for the building inspector. He's always been fair to me and the people that I've worked for the last 20 years. So I'm not offering this as an affront to him or the work that he does because he does a great job for you guys. But if you look at section 5.1.7 of your zoning bylaw, which is on the second <coughs> page of the memo that I gave you, I agree wholeheartedly with the inspector that that the town can do what was done. The issue that I have is that it was the wrong board that did it. It's this board that has jurisdiction over all of the things the building inspector just talked about, not the planning board. It's this board's job to determine whether or not something is in fact a pre-existing non-conforming use and whether or not whatever is being proposed is a change, alteration, or extension of that use. Because the only way that a an applicant can make a change, alteration, or extension of a pre-existing non-conforming <coughs> use or a pre-existing non-conforming structure is with the permit of this board. And so they did both of those things. The type and the nature of the use, although it was an automobile dealership, changed pretty dramatically. I handed up a copy of the site plan for this, and what you'll see is, as a result of the planning board me meeting, there's now requirements for green space, there's requirements for, for where parking has to be, there's requirements for where cars have to be parked. Those are all changes in the use. There's limitations on how many cars you can have, there's limitations on how many employee cars you can have. Those all substantially change the use and it's this board's prerogative to make those decisions in the first instance. If you look on that same site plan which was part of what the planning board went through, you'll see that there are a number of exterior lights on the property. You heard the inspector talk about the fact that they raised the roof and those sorts of things. The reasons that towns have um, zoning bylaws is in large part to try and remove nonconformities. The presumption is, is that if you have a pre-existing non-conforming structure or house, that the town wants you to make it more conforming and not less conforming. And if you look at what they in fact did, <clears throat> they made it more non-conforming. They increased the level of use at the site, they changed the layout of the site, they increased the exterior lighting on the site, all of which are things that, <coughs> that this board could certainly allow them to do with a finding that it's not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than what was there before. I can tell you that before I came here today, I drove by Carl's Excavating, where they have probably millions of dollars of equipment sitting outside. There's one light. I drove by this site and you can see how many lights there are and there are big pink neon lights in the window. My clients live directly across the street and look at that every day. And I just suggest to you that could you give them permission to put big pink lights in the window? Yes, with a finding that that's not substantially more detrimental than what was there before. Once again, with all due respect to the inspector, he does a great job. But it's this board and not the planning board that has to make the decision that was made. Since these alterations were made, are there more cars on the lot than there were previously? Did that licensing or permitting change at all in how many cars they could have on the lot from these new changes? Did it go from like three to five? Or so, so the I mean, the people that I've talked to have said that in the couple of years before this permit was changed there really wasn't anything going on there. I understand the inspector's argument that they still had a permit. And what so were they th permitted to sell there? I, I don't know that there was a number. Okay. 
There was. There was. Yeah, what if you're a dealer, they usually tell you how many cars you can have on the right. lot. Right. And certainly at the, at the planning board, they set a quota as to how many cars and where they had to park. And So do we know that hasn't things. changed, has it? From I don't think so. I don't. I couldn't honestly tell you, but I believe it was 10. Right. Um, and <coughs> certainly that much, much better than what was there previously mm -hmm. then. I can. Hi, Michael Pelt, um, representing uh, uh, the Norris family. Um, what the building commissioner's argument, I think, means to me is that you have the non conforming use, and, and I understand it the same way. Grandfathering is like a slang term, it means that the use was legal when it started, which I understand this one was, but at some point zoning makes it no longer legal and it's a constitutional issue that dates back to the beginning of zoning in the early 20th century. You can say to people constitutionally, okay, if you haven't started something, we're going to regulate what you can and can't do by allowing different uses in different zoning districts, but if you're already there, we can't take it away from you because that's a taking and we're not going to get into having to pay damages. So that's, I think, the origins constitutionally of pre-existing non-conforming uses. But I guess what really strikes home to me is if you are doing something discretionary, and, and this I think is where the rule of reason comes in, then I can see having to come to the board to say we want to do this and we'd like you to tell us whether or not it's more detrimental to the community but um, this is I think the second or third time I've heard about OSHA that that OSHA's you know occupational safety and health administration the feds if I have a non-conforming use I'm running a business and I in effect have a property right in that and the federal government comes along and says either you make your business you know safe for the people who work there by doing this this and that or you can't run your business anymore this is not something that's discretionary okay in other words all they're doing is meeting the requirements of the law as i understand it and then you get to what i think in statutory construction you would call a rule of reason and i think that's another you know very potent argument the building commissioner was making in that what the courts often say is you have to interpret statutes reasonably you have to avoid absurd results and if the Hadley zoning bylaw is interpreted to mean that if somebody with a non-conforming business who is required by law to make a change in order to continue to operate that business has to come here for a discretionary decision, then you get into a potential constitutional morass. For example, if the board denies it, how is that not taking away their pre-existing non-conforming use? That may be more law than you ever needed to hear, but I think it's, or, or wanted to, but I think it's important to try to put the building commissioner's reasoning into a formal legal context that I think is entirely consistent. And I don't know what the town attorney's reasoning was, but you know that would be my own analysis on behalf of the Neris family as to why I think the building inspector, um, commissioner, I'm sorry, the building commissioner made the correct decision. Thank you. Could I, could I just comment on that briefly? It, it's an interesting argument that Attorney Phil makes, and it makes a lot of sense in some contexts, except that here there was no lift before. And so the only reason that they had to expand... I, I disagree. There was lifts in there. Okay. I disagree Fun, with that. Functional lifts? Yeah. Mrs. Neris, yes. yes. I'm sorry, De, Mrs. I mean, Carr. Ms. Carr, Devinder Carr, who's married to Paul Neris, I have, to, I have to be careful in my own ways. My wife is not a missus uh, either. So she can speak to that. Go ahead. There were two lifts. Yes, there was two yes. lifts in that building. And so what's the, were they non-functional lifts? There were lifts. They were, they were functioning, the, but they were yeah, two, inside the Two witnesses. I didn't. They were, so so I, just to be clear, they're the same types of lifts that were installed 
that required the ceiling to be raised. They were there for the previous owner from Lesko's, who never really had anything that was legal. Also, they don't allow like yeah. in-ground hydraulic lifts anymore yeah. like they used to years ago. Now they all have to be above-ground electronic lifts. Mm -hmm. So, so in any event, even a, even a change, even if there was a lift there and they changed that lift, it's still a change to the way the structure and the building is being used. Particularly when you have to increase the ceiling, which and once again, this board can make that finding. I'm not saying that you can't. I'm just saying they need to apply for the proper permit and receive the proper permit. That's the only argument we're making. How is that going to help your client? <laughs> because yeah. you have you have the ability to place conditions on the permit that the planning board did. Well, I understand that, but to get re-permitted isn't necessarily going to go your way. Well, I understand it. There are other issues that really aren't for the, this board tonight, but I think there's a very good argument that your zoning bylaw says that two years of non-use is abandonment. And I've talked to some of the neighbors who would come in and say, or testify in court, that there was non-use for two years. We don't want to go down that road. All, we, all, the, all that we want is the chance to come in and tell you what they've been living with since this permit was issued and give this board the chance to impose reasonable conditions. The gentleman that out of the property became ill. If he's ill, he can't work. That doesn't say that it's not being used. He can't, you know, just because he wasn't physically there, the building was being used as storage. But so I, I appreciate that, but that's not that's not even no, an issue I, that's here tonight. Well, you're that's saying it. that it's it's. It lost its grandfather. No, I'm saying that I'm, what I'm saying is that if they come in for a permit, and for whatever reason everyone's not happy with the conditions that get imposed, there is an argument, right, that it wasn't pre-existing non-conforming, that it was abandoned because of that. Well, I'm saying it wasn't because we went through that hearing. The first hearing was discussing that. And and I and I and I, I fully appreciate that. That board doesn't have the authority to make that decision. It's this board that makes that decision. What what does do you have the zoning bylaw? What what do, what does that two year provision say? I know it's in the state act, but it, it says non use, a non conforming use which has not been used for a period of two years or more shall not be reestablished, and the future use shall be in conformity with this bylaw. And, you know, I mean, understanding that. If it has not been um, abandoned, but has just been used minimally, they're not the two. They're not the same thing. So I have to. Well, I mean, that you, uh, so you took so a word right out of my mouth. Thank you. I, I mean, but I you could say you you rent out the you know the building for storage. Say, I mean, that doesn't mean that the building is of use. It may not be functioning as a day to day business, but it is still right. being used as a facility to store. Or That's true, I mean, but I, it's not abandoned. No. Yeah, because I, I, my problem with that too is that if the building, if the, the previous owner has a Title II permit to, to run the thing as an auto shop, an auto sales thing, then, so, so say we had a conversation earlier about how many cars he's allowed to have on the property, and they say he's allowed to have 10 cars on the property. Does that mean that if for two years he never has more than five cars on the property, that he has abandoned the use of 10 cars on the property? And if he has zero, it was abandoned. Right. I, I mean, I, I think if we look outside the fact that he kept it properly permitted and paid taxes on it as an auto shop and all, the, all those things, I, I think you would go down a really sticky evaluation of, of, any, of anybody who was using something in a pre-existing way. <clears throat> that if they didn't use it, and I don't think the town would want, I mean, that would also incentivize that guy to keep 10 cars on the property at all times. I mean, everyone would use their property in the most, exact. they yeah. would use it in the most non-conforming way that they could in order to to keep to keep their right to do that so uh, I mean I, I but that's again that's not really what's here before us tonight but um, my, I, I have a question on the, <clears throat> the the planning board there's a planning board decision and there's a decision of the issuance of the building permit um, I, I don't know what I don't actually really know what the planning board uh, has made it 
the planning board issues a, something with a permit <coughs> for the property. What's the planning board? The conditions on it as well that um, this whole use is only. But what is the what's the planning board actually issue? A site plan review. Site plan review. Basically, that's what they call it. Um, so there's so that so I I don't um, that's not being appealed to us. I don't think we don't have jurisdiction over that anyway. I don't no, think, right. So, um, and I understand that there's something going on in the courts with that. But in terms of your building permit being issued, um, how does your building permit even relate to the planning board decision? I, I actually don't even understand how that would work. Because my understanding is that, you know, say, say that all that planning board stuff with the site plan review was not even done. So say, say the property hadn't even changed hands. If, um, if the previous owner had come to you and asked you to raise the roof, the planning board wouldn't have even been involved at all. In that is correct. Thing. So there's a. I, I have to make that determination as a building commissioner, and as a zoning enforcement officer. I have two roles. I have to look at what they want to do. Is it conforming to our zoning, or is it not? And then I have to look at the building side of it. What is he doing, or she doing? Does it conform to mass law? And regulations so I do have two distinct roles on every single building permit that comes in front of me and I have to make that determination and like I said I mean if we take the letter if we take this verbatim and we've been doing this for since the inception of this bylaw I have to make a determination under zoning what are they doing? Is it that detrimental that needs to go in front of the Zoning Board of Appeals? And certainly when we have it, and in addition to a house that's within the setback, that certainly has to get a finding from you guys. But if, if they're changing windows, if they're reciting, those are all still alterations, so I have to come up with some analogy of where do we cut it off? Right. I mean, I mean, if we look, how do we look at it? That's my determination. Is what they are changing, making, is that making it more non-conforming than what existed? In my opinion, when you put four feet on a wall, the exact same location, and they're raising the roof up, you haven't altered anything other than the height, which is still conforming to our bylaws. So though, that's how I have to make my decisions on this stuff. So, so that's that's the problem that I, that that I'm having here a little bit is that the plan the planning board took some type of action that I that I don't that I understand it, again is being reviewed by the courts. I guess because that, that's well, there's there's two decisions that were made by the planning board. The first, the one that the Give, please tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, the, the, the one that's being appealed is the first decision, correct? Or are they both in getting it? I think it encompasses both. It encompasses yeah. them both. So, but the first one. What decision is the planning board? What, what, yeah, what's before the planning board? And this, what decision has the planning board made that's being appealed? So they, they granted a special permit site plan approval, which basically. Everybody took to mean that whatever was going on at the site was okay. Right? The argument I'm making to you guys is that that wasn't the planning board's prerogative. That's your prerogative. But that's not what. That's not. That's not what the hearing is about. Is that related to the building permit? Well, so the building inspector, the building commissioner. I apologize. No, then issued sorry. once they got that permit. Then issued a building permit because they now had whatever permits they needed in place for him as the zoning enforcement officer and the building commissioner to issue a permit. And so what I'm saying is they need a finding from you before he is, can issue a permit. But, but your permit's not contingent on what the planning board did. No. See, again, right. then let's look at what happened with the second but, hearing. But let's look at what happened with the second hearing. I, Just, I told, when Mr. Naris came to me with the changes to the building, I said, there, you would have, because of those changes, you're going to have to go in front of the planning board and the zoning board. He went to the planning board. During the planning board, he said, I'm taking everything off. I'm not going to change the window. I'm not, change, I'm not going to alter it. I'm not going to 
uh, the tower. So what was left? Making it safe by raising the walls up. And that's all he did. So, so the, the point I was going to make is, for example, if you had a use in town that required a site plan approval, like all your commercial uses yes. on Route 9 require site plan approval, and someone came in and they didn't have site plan approval, and they came and said, I'd like a building permit, you would say, you have to get site plan approval before I can issue you a building permit. Based on what he's possibly doing, right? If he's changing a window, I'm not going to. It, right. So I understand our, our differences on that issue. And so what I'm saying is, as a condition precedent of this building permit being issued, they had to get a finding from this board that the changes, alterations, and extensions of the structure and of the use were not more detrimental. I understand that the commissioner disagrees with that. He says there was no change, alteration, or extension that required a finding. I think the case law says that any change, alteration, or extension, and I'll argue by way of analogy, if you if you were in Northampton and you wanted to add an extension to a building, Northampton zoning bylaw says that you could make a change, alteration, or extension to a pre-existing non-conforming use as long as that change, as of right, with a permit from the building inspector, as long as that change, alter, ex, alteration, or extension doesn't make whatever it is more non-conforming or it fits within other certain little parameters that they give you. Your zoning bylaw doesn't say that. Your zoning bylaw has an absolute prohibition on changes, alterations, or extensions without a finding from this board. I don't, I don't, um, I guess I don't follow that logic because he went through a site, or they went through a site review, they got a permit, and there's nothing really that I can find in Section 4 General Regulations of the Zoning Bylaw that that uh, that would result in a four-foot increase in walls only cause any problem. So, <laughs> what, <laughs> what, 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 trigger, what triggers a site plan review? Like, so, this, this, this guy, like, the property already had a Title II permit to, like we were saying about, but that wasn't being like seemingly utilized that much, but they had a proper permit and they were a pre-existing non-conforming use. Like what, how do they end up before the planning board? So there's two ways um, that, that the planning board wants to see anybody. One is if there's a tenant change of use. They just want them to come on in, tell them what they're doing, find out what their hours are, um, how many people they're going to have, is it the same as before? If it isn't, they might require uh, a full site plan review. The other is if, if the person comes in and says that I am, I, I'm buying this place for this use, automatically triggers. The other, and with that, if, if you're making a lot of changes, to your parking lot or anything like that, it has to go through planning. The planning deals with the outside of the building. So you, so there's, so there, so the Title Two is, is that a state permit or the planning board? The, the, the class two, two class is, is a permit that's issued by our board of selectmen as a licensing board. Okay, and so then it's to sell cars. So then you need a you need a special permit that is granted after site plan review to to run any commercial property. Whether it's whether it's conforming or not, like there's a table in here that stipulates what needs a special permit. And most everything in in along Route Nine, which is our limited business corridor, requires a special permit. Okay. It allow. I mean, in so my it, opinion, a special permit allows a little bit of latitude for the boards to give a little bit more, take a, a little bit. Okay. Away. So, so what? Because what I'm trying to understand is that. There's a there's a lot of moving pieces here because the property was sold and the pro and, and the property is being updated, upgraded, whatever. But what what I'm kind of what I don't see your building permit being really tied back to the special permit that was issued because it isn't because if the if With the, what the previous doing, owner the previous isn't. owner could have come to you and asked you for a building permit to to raise the roof and the planning board wouldn't have been involved at all. So the I understand that the planning board was involved because that's why I was uh, and wasn't trying to be. You know, pedantic there, but the 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 planning board was involved because of the change of property and change of ownership of the property, and that triggers a review of the 
And then when he came, yeah, the first thing, promise. he was making some major changes to the building. Do you know what, do you but see? But he took it all off. I see two parts of the zoning section five again that apply, I think. One is on alteration. So the non conforming structure may not be altered or reconstructed if the cost of such alter alteration or reconstruction exceeds the assessed value of the structure at the time of the change. And of course, that's about money, not anything else. The other one, 5.17, 5.1.7, regulations of non conforming uses or structures, notwithstanding any language in this bylaw to the contrary, pre existing non conforming structures or uses may be extended, altered, or changed, provided that no such extension, change, or alteration shall be permanent or permanent, unless the Board of Appeals makes a finding that such change, extension, or alteration is not substantially more detrimental, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, they're, they're allowed. The question in front of us, I think, is whether this Board of Appeals has to do anything about it. And, like, the, Attorney said, in Northampton, you look at Northampton, um, they have a better written. Yeah, it's not This is there. not, but I, I, it's not well written in Hadley. It should be changed at some point. I think your board needs to um, bring this up and address it. But I go on the premise that what we have been doing for the, I've been here for 31 years. This is what we've been doing. And this is the reason why we've been doing it, because if we went by the letter of that statement, everything would be coming in front of you. I have the right as a zoning enforcement officer to make that determination of where that cutoff is. And we use that, and you've, you've seen a number of them that comes in front of you to have a finding for what the alterations are going to be. But I do have a job, and that job is to make that determination. And we've been doing it that way for 30 years. Andrew? Andrew. <laughs> oh, uh, that fits into another body of case law, which says that the local board is the body that's familiar with local conditions and while certainly you know the cases can go different ways what the courts have said is if an interpretation is reasonable the courts should show deference there's even some cases that use the phrase highly deferential bow although it's hard to imagine a judge bowing down you know to anybody on the bench but the the i think the, there is clearly a body of case law that says that the determination that a local board makes based on the local conditions which the building commissioner has described to you is entitled to some degree of deference. And if we end up in court, that's certainly an argument that I would, I would be making. But it just, and all that does is it puts what the building commissioner has said into, I think, uh, a solid legal framework. Thank you. Well, I, I don't. I, I don't think it. I, you know, Tim, Tim brings up a, a workload issue. I, I just like think you know even in some of the arguments that were advanced here tonight. Uh, you know, like with, with things such as lighting and the colors of the lighting in the windows. I, I mean, the the you could go, like any type of change. If you open the door to you getting review for any change to a non, you wouldn't be able to operate a business with a non. With an, any type of non-performing business, if you, if, if you view that, or well, you need exterior illumination. Well, like, like, like giving the planning board but, found that they weren't supposed but to. But so say say they've used uh, a different type of light bulb, and now they're going to switch to LEDs outside. It's going to be brighter outside. They didn't even add a, a, add an outdoor light. Mm -hmm. Are they supposed to come before our board to ask us for a finding that adding an LED light outside versus an mm -hmm. incandescent light is is a is a change? You know that would really open up. That would really open up. Like we would be reviewing every single thing, every single change that you make as a, as a business owner. Right? Well, that doesn't seem like that could be possible. Like but similar, similar as well as Tim had said, like I don't consider putting a window or I mean constitute really a change. Like the footing is still the same, and I mean I would, I would. So you could see some situations where changing a window could be the, the different, or where it could be the same. If you're replacing a broken window, 
I mean, but even the most the expansive interpretation that that Attorney Tanner's put forward. I mean, I think if you're replacing a broken window, even you would be looking at that's a change. Yeah, you're changing. Yeah. The, that's a change in alteration to the window. Um, if, if you're changing from a, from windows that are two feet wide to windows that are ten feet wide, I mean, mm -hmm. that obviously that that so that there has to be some. there has to be some uh, thing, but. I have a question. Um, the notice that we received about this hearing um, says that if the parties have come to appeal the issuance of the building permit um, for 373 River Drive. But I, mean, I heard something, I think you mentioned that you were, the, the board had to, the zoning board had to make a finding. Which is it? It's just, so what I'm saying is that Without the board making a finding, the building inspector couldn't issue the building permit. And so I'm asking you to revoke his permit and direct the, the owners of the car dealership to, to apply to this board for a finding. So just to talk about one issue that you had addressed before, dealing with windows and those sorts of things, the case law talks about cosmetic changes to a building, right? Changing the paint color. Things that are really innocuous and don't have an effect on the neighborhood. But if you look at your zoning ordinance, it regulates stuff like where you can park, how much lighting you can have, how much lighting you can cast out on the neighbors, what types of signs you can have. Those are all things that you've chosen as a community to regulate through your zoning ordinance. And those are the types of things that, if they're changed, have to have a finding. And I'd suggest to you that there are a lot of changes to the structure and to the site that are regulated in your zoning book. But and all you have to do is look at the permit that was issued by the planning board to see that. I think that you're saying that it has to have a finding. It goes back to what they said and what Andrew said is that we would have having to issue findings for every little thing. So I'm happy to address that too. You as a community have made the decision, whether intentionally or otherwise, to almost absolutely prohibit changes to pre-existing non-conforming uses. Other towns make it much easier to do. For whatever reason, Hadley has decided that in order to make basically any change to a pre-existing non-conforming use or structure, you have to have a finding. No, I, I can't follow that at all because all you were asking for here is, an, is uh, to, to appeal the issuance of Tim's um, building permit. And finding is sort of really out of the, out of the realm of this particular meeting. I think. Right, so what I'm saying is revoke his building permit because he couldn't issue it because they didn't have a finding. They then have to file an but entirely separate... But you're assuming that finding is required. That's why we started. Yeah, that's I mean, right. It doesn't say that. <coughs> what well, does, it says any change alteration or extension to a pre-existing non-conforming use, and if you read the case law on that, it's very restrictive. Well, I have the case law in front of me, but I have to say I disagree with your interpretation of that section. And, and which is certainly your prerogative to do. You're the board member, not me. But the case law interpreting language like your language is extremely restrictive. But for, uh, I've been here for 31 years, and even longer, the, the inspectors were prior to me. The town has, yes, even though it's written that way, we have follow it according to what we've been doing since the inception of that bylaw. And, and once again, I'm in no position to dispute that. All I'm saying is your bylaw says what it says, and it's a very restrictive bylaw. But you still are asking just for appeal um, of the issuance of a building permit. That's what this section That's right, because I can't make them apply for a finding. Right. If you can't find it. The money that we particularly we we would give it to the town. Anybody else have questions? Anybody else have questions? What, what would um what what would be uh the, the I understand that the building permit was issued and that there are issues with um, with moving forward with the building permit during the appeals process like at your own risk or whatever. But the, the construction has the construction's already happened, right? I mean the changes yeah. so it's been done. Yeah. 
And anybody else out there have questions? Is that a good time for that? One of the things if you want to do as a board is to not make a decision tonight and talk to town council if you so desire, based on what has been brought up, or <coughs> just go ahead and make a decision. Can they ask an opinion? Mm -hmm. Does it work that way? Can, does that have to go through the select board? But can they ask for maybe a letter, a formal written opinion from town council? They can. That would. That so would. what? Mm -hmm. we, can, we can address the appeal issue. Well, so what? I don't know. I, maybe maybe I'm being a little bit too pragmatic about it, but I, I think this is an interesting legal question. I I'm cognizant. I, I don't. I don't. <laughs> one of the things I like to hope our board always does is try not to waste people's time and, and money, and, and you know. And I understand that there's processes to be followed. I, I don't. I don't see the outcome of this really. In the end, making making that much of a difference in in the in the process. I mean, I think there's a, the question about whether you should have a finding, whether you are on the side of asking for a finding or not. And I, I speak only for myself, but um, I, I mean, I, I think that we typically this type of thing that comes before the board. I mean, we would make a finding that you could add, add four feet to the, to the building. I mean, the, the other questions about uses and all those things are are sort of outside of. At this point, anyway, they're they're outside of our our purview. So I mean, I, I you know that being said, I I just um, I mean I, I I just think that what would end up I don't know I, you know I don't know what I'm trying to say. But I, I don't I don't think it's I don't think it's really gonna again I I I'm a lawyer I find it to be an interesting uh, legal matter. Well, right, but that's that's all we have to do. But the but the. But the question is whether there should have been a finding to... to it doesn't matter. This is what they're asking for. No, but the, but in order... The, the appeal of the building permit is because... Yeah, it doesn't matter. This is what they're asking for. Why go beyond? Because they're looking... Because they're saying that the, that the building permit should have had a finding before they, it could have been issued. So, so the question about the finding is, is before us. I mean, we can't make a finding, but... Yeah, exactly. So I just deal with what has precisely been asked. Mr. Pillow. Um... The value of getting a letter from town council is they've already filed one lawsuit. I think it's fair to say, you know, if 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 you decide not to revoke the permit, if that's your decision, they're going to take that to the superior court too, or maybe to the lay court. That's their choice. But I think because you've had a lawyer and, and it's not saying you have to do it every time, but you've had a lawyer give you a formal legal memorandum. And I would just hope that under that circumstance, and that may be a good dividing line. You know, it, it certainly, you know, you don't need to go to the lawyer every time, but whereas here a lawyer has given you a formal legal memorandum, it would probably, hopefully, be a good idea to send, ask that that memorandum be sent to the town attorney and the town attorney give you a formal written opinion um, and I'm, you know and I'm taking some risk I don't know what that opinion would be but um, Tim already got an opinion well I got an opinion that I could issue the building yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you but, an opinion that you could and was issued then, then then we deal with the appeal yeah, um, well, I, I'm, I'm in favor of um, working on this or town council letter I'm not really ready to say that we should be looking at a finding. No, we, we can't do that. No, we can't do that. Um, uh, I mean, Frank, I, I, I don't. Uh, seems like a seems like a waste of the town's resources to to, to get a, a you know written memorandum. I mean, I, I I believe Tim that he got that that he got a I guess a uh, you know verbal uh, opinion. Um, and I, I just I, I don't I don't see really if they're if they're going to appeal they're going to appeal it and I, whether we got advice from the attorney I don't think it really matters. Tim, would the town council be um, weighing in on um, the zoning regulations description of when the um, alterations can be permitted with the board uh, making a finding to get that vote? 
In other words, we're supposed, according to, um, sorry, I forgot your name. Tanner. Tanner. According to Mr. Tanner, um, this board is supposed to um, make a finding whenever uh, a change, sure. extension, or alteration is needed in a non-conforming uh, situation. But will the town council be dealing with zoning law in a letter that he might get? Yeah, he would be looking at that based on the letter from um, Attorney Tanner's office. And make an opinion as to whether the way it should have been handled. Well, I'm just, you know, curious about what he would say about the Board of Zoning Board of Appeals having to weigh in on it. Remember, every... it's his opinion, so yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to be your opinion after you get it either. <laughs> but it, it, it puts us into a better light of what's possibly going to happen. It might clarify some of this language. Well, I... And maybe not. Well, it, it's an old bylaw in 1961. One of the sections that should be addressed. And I, you know, it's my argument, and I agree with Attorney Tanner. The way it reads is yes, everything has to go in front of you. But we have consistently, since the inception of that bylaw, made a stipulation that the, that the zoning enforcement officer makes that determination of what needs to go in front of the board or not. There has to be a cutoff. I bring up the analogy all the time with everybody on this when, when it's stated. Highways, three lanes. Always you'll see a sign that says no trucks permitted in third lane. Pickup truck is a truck, but we all know that a pickup truck can be in that third lane. Why? Because the determination is that it doesn't follow that, that regulation. And this is what we've done here. Yeah, you can look at this bylaw and say, gee, if you do anything, then you need to go in front of the ZBA. That will put you as a full-time board, probably. And I have given out 900 permits this past year. And I believe that 85% of them would be in front of you. I, we have made that determination that I have the right to figure out where, which ones need to go in front of you. And that's what I've done. This is the first time that this has ever come up in front of us. And I, uh, you know, I, I think that we do have the right. Um, and that, I think, to answer the, the, the chair's question is a good reason to go to the town attorney because what I would call are two rules of statutory construction. One says if you've got the plain language of a law, which you know, this is like local legislation, then you apply it as it's written. The other one says, but you can't do that if it's going to create an absurd result. And so in this case at least, um, whatever common sense or your own intuition suggests, you're confronted with two conflicting rules really of statutory construction. And Attorney Tanner is urging one of them upon you, and the building commissioner is urging another one. And that is a question of law, and that's why I think you might find it helpful to ask the town attorney what the, for a formal written opinion. And yes, it is an expenditure of town um, resources, but uh, basically, we would be taking it from there. I mean, if, 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 if you decide in our favor, then we would um, have to carry the ball. Normally, the town attorney basically says, you got the building permit, um, you defend it. So, and, and that's the case with their appeal of the planning board decision. The town attorney's position, as far as I know, as it always is, is you got the site plan review, you defend it. And I'm just hoping that you would, you would find it um, informative. And as Tim noted correctly, you're not obligated to follow it. It's advice, not a command, but you know, 
anyway, thank, thank you for listening. Um, I mean, like, what the planning board put forward in terms of the zoning board of appeals, is there anything that you would have had issue with that Tim approved through the issuance of his building permit that you see as anything extenuating that would have drawn issue for you or drawn pause at the time? Andrew, I mean, like, the planning board took into consideration the exterior illumination not to spill over. Um, I mean, does the raising of the roof four feet to accommodate the lifts change? The, I mean, are we? Seems like we'd be doing double or triple work to. I think we should do what the session, what the uh, appeal asks us to do at this point in time, unless uh, with the alternative of seeing the town council or getting a letter from the town council. I don't know if there's anything else we can do except either appeal or uh, either revoke the permit or let it stand. My, like in terms of a common sense approach, I mean, my 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 uh, I mean, my opinion is, is, is like I, I'm inclined to uphold the issuance of the building permit because because I I, I don't and again I I, I know this is like <laughs> violates like a lot of like legal uh, like tradition, but like I I, I, like, I I one of the reasons I would uphold the the permit is that I don't think a finding would make a difference. Like we would get, I would, I would vote to give the finding. I understand that I'm like sort of putting the cart before the horse there, in terms of the process. But like, if, 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 like if the, I agree with you. Like, like that makes a difference to me. That like, like that, that just feels like that's the most straightforward way. I mean, the, the, the building's already been modified. But again, so I'm talking now. I like understanding that it's not necessarily like the strictest like legal interpretation of how to handle it. But like the building's already been modified. The, you know, if we were to revoke the building permit, that doesn't that doesn't lower the building. It would just go back to a finding. Then we would, you know, we would be here discussing many of these same things. Um, and, and then and then then we were going to issue a building permit for for build. You know, if it, assuming the finding would come out, we'd be issuing a building permit for work that's already happened anyway. Mm -hmm. So that just seems like uh, like again, uh, I know. Uh, like in terms of like the strictest, uh, like I'm, I'm just, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I just that's what I'm struggling with. Is that like I understand that that might not be, but that just seems common sense wise. It doesn't seem to make sense to. to why, be, you, why would you even need to? I mean, I think it really goes down to the, the the argument is, do I have the right to make those decisions, or want to get a finding or not? Yeah, and that's what we've been doing. And, <laughs> Quite honestly, I don't think there would be a finding. Yeah. Yeah. But that's my opinion. Yeah, I uh, move that we uphold the issuance of the building permit. I'm on the level for 73 River Drive. 373 River Drive. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I'm sorry. We'll close the hearing. Yep.